Hi, continuing on from my last video, I did uh, nodal analysis with one node. I'm going to do it now with two nodes. So I'll just mark in the nodes for you here. Uh, I'm going to call this one V1 and this one V2. Now, just to clarify, this circuit has more than two nodes. It actually has four nodes. There's one here at the top left, and there's one here, which is the ground or the common node. So we're just interested in finding V1 and V2 at the moment. So what we have to do now, which is different from the last one, is that we have to have an equation for V1 and V2 um, using a KCL equation, and then we have to simultaneously solve them. So I'll start off with a V1 equation. So I'll do them in different colors so we can distinguish between them. So at node V1, we've got the current coming out of the left side here is V is actually just, sorry, it's just negative 1 amps because you can see the difference here is that we have a current source. So we know um, the current source is in the opposite direction to the current outwards of the node, so we're going to say it's negative, negative 1 amp, so just negative 1. And then the, the current coming out of the downwards from the node would be V1 on 10 by the by the Ohm's law, and then the current going towards the right is V1 minus V2 on 5, and that all equals 0. Alright, so we've got the equation there, and now for V2, I'll do it in blue, I'll do the current coming out here right so it's going to be the negative of this current here it's going to be the negative the current going to the left is going to be negative times that and we can see it's v2 minus v1 on 5 because it's just v2 like the voltage of v2 minus the voltage of v1 which is the potential difference between those two points divided by the resistance that's the current the current coming downwards is v2 on 10 plus v2 on 5. Alright, so now we've got our two equations. Um, now we have to simultaneously solve them. You can do this in a variety of ways. You can use matrices, you can use elimination, you can use substitution. I'm going to use substitution, that's just um, how I like to do to it most of the time. So, most of the marks, actually, probably about 60% of the marks, I'd say, would go to just writing out these equations. It shows that you understand how the circuit works and the principles behind them. The rest is crunching numbers really. So I'm going to take this uh, node V1 equation up here and I'm going to solve it for V1. I'm going to use the substitution method. So uh, first of all I'm just going to bring the 1 over because just add 1 to both sides equals V1 on 10. Then I'm going to split that fraction up. Alright, now I'm going to bring V2 over 5 over, so V2 on 5 plus 1 equals, and I'm going to factorize V1 on this side. We'll now divide both sides by one tenth plus one five one fifth, and this will give us v one. So v two on five plus one all divided by one tenth plus one fifth. It's a bit of a long one. Um, I probably will probably can simplify that a bit more actually. Um, this pro this equals actually I'm going to times both sides of that fraction by five. So it'll be V2, if I, what I'm doing here is timesing by 5 on 5. So it's effectively timesing it by 1. Um, so I get V2 plus 5 over 1 half plus 1. And that is the same as V2 plus 5 on 
three halves. Okay. So this is what V1 is equal to. I'll just write that again. V1 is V2 plus 5 on 3 halves. Might even put that as 2V2 plus 10 on 3. That's probably a better way to put it. I don't have any fractions on the denominator there. All I've done is just um, times by 2 on 2, which is the same as times by 1 there. Okay, so we've got V1, and I'll bring back our equation down here, from up here, sorry. And we should now put this V this V1 that we've just found, and we're going to put it, we're going to put it in where V1 is in this equation. So it's going to get a bit hairy here, uh, but... We'll get there in the end. So, whoops. So we have v2 minus 2v2 plus 10 on 3, which is just our v1. Remember, I'll just add that in here. This is just effectively v1, but it's in terms of v2. And this just makes it so we have one one equation with one variable that we can just solve for. All right. So now we just basically solve a v2, and we should get some sort of number. I'm just going to times everything by five here, just to get rid of that um, denominator on the on the bottom there. So it will get v2 minus two v2 plus ten on three plus 5v2 on 10, plus 5v2 on 5. Simplifying this, we're just going to get this. Alright, now I'm going to times everything by 3 to get rid of that denominator. So we'll get 3v2 minus 2v2, make sure that goes in brackets and 3v2 on 2 plus 3v2 all equal to 0. Uh, now I'll just expand that bracket by timesing everything in the bracket or well, this you can imagine like this is a 1 so we got minus 2v2 there minus 10 plus 3v2 on 2 plus 3v2. Alright, so straight away I'm just going to group all the v2s together. So we've got 3 here, 2 there, and then 3 over 2 up there, and then 3. So just putting that in the calculator. 3 minus 2 plus 3 halves plus 3 is 11 over 2, or I'll just say it's 5.5v2 and then don't forget that minus 10 equals 0. So now we can easily solve for v2 and we got v2 equals 10 divided by 5.5 and if we're going to put that in decimal form that's about 1.82 volts so there's our V2, and now it's very easy to find V1 because we had an equation for V1 back up here, right here. So it's 2V2 plus 10 over 3. 2V2 plus 10 over 3. And all we do now is just put in this value for V2 we have here. So 2 times 1.82 plus 10 all over 3. And putting that in my calculator, I get 2 times 1.82 plus 10 on 3. That equals to 4.55 volts, approximately. So, there we have it. V1 equals 4.55 volts, and V2 equals 1.82 volts.